People says Dan Toma. In the Bla, Twitch chat. Yeah. I am so confused. <laughs> I didn't mean to confuse you with my wacky phone weirdness, um, but I'm I'm curious. Uh, you know, if people are iPhone people or Android people, and if they have really strong views about that. You know, I feel like that was a conversation a long time ago, and it's kind of faded, but it's sort of. You still see it pop up in places. Like, come, come, come on, y'all. Ah, welcome to Texan Farmer. We are happy to have you along. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Like, iPhone people scare me a little. Really? Why is that? Um, just, uh, not just iPhone people, but like Apple people in general scare the shit out of me. Because there's, it's, it feels like there's very much a, like a, like a Apple community that the rest of us aren't allowed to be a part of kind of thing. Um, and it just, I, I don't know, man, it just feels a little bit terrifying. Just a little bit terrifying. Maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just a coward, but it feels like, feels like Steve Jobs did a really good job at creating a, a, uh, an entity and it's like, Apple, we are Apple, and the rest of you are mortals. And it's like, um, it's a phone. I'm going to need you to just slow it down a little bit. Terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying. I'm like, did I, and I, I really do feel like I'm missing from it. I feel like I didn't get a memo, and 
people when you're like in your room full of iPhone iPhone people, they're just looking at you with disdain, like, hmm. you're like no, I just I, I got my phone and I'm not don't hurt me. I think like, really, it, that kind of does happen, like. So I got a bit of a glimpse into the iPhone world through Clubhouse back when that was a thing because people were all locked down. And so, you know, people are all over Clubhouse. And and I think you saw this a little bit too, Rand, when you when you jumped into Clubhouse. But you know, I spent a fair bit of time just kind of just kind of listening in and there was a lot of anti Android sentiment. They, you know, they called Android people the aliens. There was a lot of, like, derision that didn't seem to be really necessary, Um, especially because, so I I got an iPhone specifically for Clubhouse and got a, you know, threw threw a SIM card into it. So I've, I've been actually using an iPhone a fair bit after many years of Android, and it's just, there's places where it's better and there's places where it's not as good. And so it really just depends on what you're trying to do with the phone, I think, whether, you know, whether one is better or the other is better. And it's weird that that iPhone people are so convinced that their phone is so much better. So much better. So much better. They don't even have a real clipboard. So today I was trying to send Wrench some notes from our rehearsal the other day, which was banging, by the way. Look out. And... Uh, and I typed them all up, but they were at the bottom of another message. So I decided to cut that part out and send it as a separate message since it was a, a separate topic. So I, I cut it and I went to go paste it, but accidentally hit cut instead, even though there was nothing highlighted, iPhone decides that that means that I have now made a different thing onto my clipboard, which by the way is nothing. And now if I try to hit paste, it's going to hit paste. It's going to, it's going to paste nothing. And I'm going to end up with having to uh, type all of that stuff all over again because it's just gone. There's no like multi-item clipboard on the iPhone. That's and ridiculous. It, right? It really is. Sometimes I want to go back and paste the thing that I, you know, that I copied six copies ago. And on Android, you can do that. No problem. Not even a thing. And on iPhone, it's literally not even a thing. Yeah. We got librarian and YouTube pointing out that it's kind of a false dichotomy that we're we're given as as you're saying, sleeves like different different uses, different people with different needs. Um, you know, doesn't all have to be the same. But uh, a lot of things kind of. I think it's good to keep in mind the Stanford Prison Experiment. Um, in a lot of cases, just just how how little it takes for people to like kind of turn on each other. Like you have a different kind of phone. Like you're gonna like do like in group out group stuff because of your phone. It takes so little, but maybe it takes so little to to overcome that too. This is a really excellent point that you're making, Wrench. Um, and uh, I also want to give a shout out to Liberian Bear because that is first of all a totally awesome name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh and um and Liberian Bear said, I absolutely love you guys. And uh, you know, we've got some amazing musicians in this crowd here. Uh just a, a little subset here. We have Wrench the Mastermind, we have our son, the voice of reason, MC Extraordinaire, freestyling, uh just like the greatest freestyler I have pers- I've ever seen personally live in person. Um this man will start rapping about your shirt and then talk about what we had for lunch that day and make, you know, various statements about what's happening in the news and what happened on the highway and just he's pulling it all from his amazing brain. So what did happen on the highway? Yeah, right. You you were driving all over Philly today, weren't you? Man, listen. I'm about to start charging my kids rent money or uh, gas money. So this is my day, right? These, these are how my days start. Up at six, I get the boy, take him to school, right? I'm home for about 10 minutes. Then I go take my daughter and her friend to work. Uh, my, my son's school is maybe 10 minutes from here. Daughter works 40 minutes from my house, 40 minutes from her house, which is 15 minutes from my house. So that's like an hour drive. Then I come home and then Unless it's Tuesday or Wednesday, then I gotta go to work in Kensington, which is down 95. And then at one 1.30, I gotta leave work, come get the boy. 
from school because he doesn't have a school bus yet. I get a text every morning from the transportation <laughs> saying, hey, you don't have a bus yet. Sorry. Really? Really? Yeah, so no bus for you. Keep it moving, punk. No bus for you. Welcome, Aeon Mix. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. It's fun, though. I mean, you know, I get to, to wild out with my daughter and such and just act cool. Um, but no, it, it's 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 an interesting. It's, it was today was an interesting day because I was just all over the place, um, and it just got kind of ridiculous. Well, that does say Liberian bear. Isn't it great? Uh, Liberian yeah, we should, we bear. Should t- those who are not in the YouTube, we should we should note that that is spelled L I B E A R, and that's all caps. Bear, Liberian bear very sweet um and uh and librarian bear actually puts out a shout out to uh put you down and uh that's pretty great and we got blair over in the facebook chat good to see you again blair and richard everything so far as well um wrench how about you what were you up to today um actually the first first full day of school this year for uh my seven-year-old did some drop off and pick up and uh yeah well uh, that and i did some uh i did a little music production we got some new stuff that we were messing around with in rehearsals so now i gotta uh work up some beats and stuff for it and uh make some adjustments uh to to have those beats structured for when we go into the studio that is very exciting uh in the rehearsal on tuesday um there was a, uh, a sort of challenge laid down by Wrench, which was, hey, let's do, uh, let's do kind of a, you know, a minory groove. And, uh, and to watch that develop was just really, really, really excellent. That was fire, dude. That was fire. That was a real, real dope. Uh, I, the, the thing that made me, that excited me about it was that it, it just started real, just like, Mm-hmm. and then it just started to build a little bit build a little bit and then it just kept riding man that shit was hot it was a real real dope man. y'all I, 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 I wanna I would like to do a video like a live of one of our rehearsals you know what I mean on on one of these various channels and such just just, just to see that like just to have y'all see that, that just to watch cool. something like that build, man. Listen, it was whoo, that she was <laughs> and phenomenal. Folks can, and folks can handle like twenty minutes of the same chord progression <laughs> while we uh, while we tinker with the the lick and stuff. It was really long. It wasn't maybe twenty. It was more like sixteen minutes. Yeah, but we you know we were, we were making little <laughs> while it was while it was going on. We were making little tinkers with it to get it. it was, yeah, man. It would change up a little bit here, change up a little bit. Yeah, that shit was fire, dog. Mm-hmm. It was so dope. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I wish I, I wish y'all could see that. Uh, that actually was not Melody on the vocals in uh, on Barn Burning. Uh, Betty Lynn asked us in the, in oh, the well, Twist Show. It was in the uh, on the LR in all LR bags. It was in the LR bags. Yeah. It was, yeah. But it wasn't on the album. On the album, yeah. It was our dear friend Megan Jean. That's right. Um, with who, and I, I will say this, as yeah, the, the, in the LR bags video, it was, it was it was Melody. But on the album, it was Megan Jean, whose voice is even bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, and. And that was a that was a that was an experience. That whole joint was an experience. But no, that was that was melody on the on the LR back song. She right. killed that. And then on the um and then on the new commercial for Sagamore Spirit Whiskey, we have uh Jen Larson singing. Yeah, yeah. And if you go out and see a, a Gangster Grass live show one of these days, you'll probably see me singing it. That's right. That's right. Anybody can sing Barn Burning. You too <laughs> could sing Barn sure. Burning. At some point, every person in the world will have been the singer for Barn Burning for 15 <laughs> minutes. That's what Andy Warhol said, anyway. <laughs> wow. Andy Warhol was way ahead of his time. Yes. 
but no, nah, we're uh, yeah, yeah I, I I would like for y'all to 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 really to get a to get a glimpse of that because it is mm-hmm. it was dope. And then you know, what I mean, if God forbid we start writing or you know have something written for that, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. I started a, I actually had a verse that just kind of fit. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It just kind of fit the whole the whole vibe of the joint. Uh, I don't even know where it is. Wait, did I erase that? No, surely not. No, it's around here somewhere. Oh yeah, I know where it is. I know where it is. I moved it. Uh, I, no, that's not it. We're getting. Oh um, snap! <laughs> did has 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 Gangster Grass ever done a Cotton Eye Joe cover? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, Cotton Eye Joe. Like it is a traditional song, but it's not like. Oh, we got uh, welcome, Hostel. Lots of things are, are traditional. Yeah. yeah. Lots of things are traditional. But they're not like, you know, oh, this amazing song that we all love. Um, what was the band that did Cotton Eye Joe that made it into a, like a club? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was good stuff. That's, that's the only reason that a lot of us know Cotton Eye Joe. It's true. I would not have wait, known it without that song. Was that a, wait, was that a song before that? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, that's like, it's like an old, you know, sitting on your front porch picking the banjo oh, kind of song. Shit. I, think. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, and, uh, and I mixed it uh, with Rednecks. Yeah, I, I had Rednecks, no idea. Right. I thought that I thought that they created that joint. I totally thought that mm-hmm. Rednecks made that up. That's right. Wow. Thank, See, I'll be learning things. Thank you, Anne Mixed, for uh, reminding us of that. And, you know, it's it's interesting, though, come to think of it, like, you kind of could make a song like that, that people, based on hearing it, thought was a, a sitting on your front porch picking the banjo song, when in fact it was actually made up out of whole cloth right then. Mm-hmm. So, like, it occurred to me when I was saying, isn't that an old sitting on your front porch picking the banjo song that maybe it's not? Like, I, I don't I know. I had no <laughs> idea. <laughs> no, I mean, that's... <laughs> That is kind of, you know, something to shoot for is to write something that feels classic, even that, even if it's original. And I know, I know there's a, you know, there's a number of Games Grass songs where we sort of tweaked and tweaked in a traditional and then like changed up some words and stuff. And then people are like, wow, that's so cool. And then they like, at some point, like, I know this has happened to our son where at some point you, you hear Darlin' Corey and you're like, wait, that's someone who put you down. Yeah, right. oh yeah. yeah, yeah, it definitely was. I'm like, hold on a second. Yeah. That's a real song? Oh, yeah. damn. I, 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 yo, I had no idea about Cotton Eye Joe. Yeah, uh, yeah I, Darling Corey was uh, was one of the classic murder ballads. Um, of dig a hole, like a dig a hole in the metal. metal. Dig, a, dig a hole in the meadow to lay Darling Corey down. It's like burying the, the, the girl that you murdered in the murder ballad. But, I, you know, I, I changed that part of the, <laughs> of the lyrics because uh, I don't want to go in a different direction with it. Um, yeah, and uh, Two Yards um, was was branched off from uh, from a traditional song called Gravel Yard. Yeah, about you know, being in prison and being in the gravel yard with a number for your name. Uh, yeah, yeah, you told me that. One. You told me that. One. Well, yeah, yo, that Cotton Eye Joe. Oh my God, dude! I feel like I feel like I should have known that, and I want to. I want to apologize to all my bluegrass people out there that, that I didn't know that. I'm slipping. That's on me. Y'all got to keep me sharp. Yeah. You know, y'all got to keep me. Aon makes this correct. Rednecks was Swedish or some kind of Scandinavian. Yeah. It was yeah, really yeah. funny because it was like, it was like you were here, like it was this like you know American style, but being filtered back through Scandinavian accents and sensibility and stuff so it was like this weird like fun house mirror reflection of american stuff i forgot about that redneck i used to have a puppet that i would like dance i would have dance to that song like a little like marionette (laughs) kind of like fuzzy (laughs) what what was it though like what was it (laughs) Like was, what kind of puppet? It was like a purple, fuzzy. I can't even tell you what it was because it. I don't think it's. It's not like a real creature. It's almost a muppety, like a long neck and like a big fuzzy purple head and like two, two sort of big feet that would just kind of, you know, you could kind of 
make go like that and like tap his tap his little toe. I, <laughs> I don't know. Speaking I... of speaking of weird purple things that nobody knew what they were. A manager at McDonald's the other day in an interview said what Grimace was. Oh, I got to hear this. I've been wondering this for my whole life. Grimace is supposed to be a taste bud. What? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? We immediately lost Olio. I was. <laughs> Yo, I was like, his name is originally the Evil Grimace. Yeah, you just it down and just grimace. I mean, there were so many questions, but what is grimace was at at the root at of the, the top of it. What yeah, the just, hell is grimace is definitely something that has been plaguing. Yeah, so purple taste blood would have to be evil. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, why? Well, why purple is one of the other questions. You know? it's like, what is why this? Why not? Like. You know, there were people that were like, oh, Grimace is an eggplant. And it's like, but there's no, there's no eggplant anything yeah. on the McDonald's menu. I mean, that would imply that. that there are vegetables near a McDonald's, and we all know that ain't true. <laughs> and and hey. the thing is, uh, you know, the different characters represented different things, like the fry guys for the fries and the hamburger for hamburgers. Um, and Grimace was like representing shakes. So my theory was that Grimace was like a, a blob of shake. <laughs> Yeah, but what flavor? I don't know. It's just like, like no Perfect. matter what theory you go with, you yeah. end with a different it's question. Just that you more questions. Answer. Just yeah. way more questions, yes. man. Yes. So who how who who was breaking this down? It was a it was it was a I'm watching the uh my the morning news, the Fox twenty nine news, and the, the anchor said that uh he heard it. It was a meeting with. It was an interview with a McDonald's manager, one of the managers of McDonald's, and he said that Grimace was was supposed to be a taste bud. And I was, was like, this, "Was this like somebody that was involved in the creation of Grimace?" Like, I, I don't like know. I didn't ago? get that much information. <laughs> Grimace was like, created five hundred years ago in a volcano or something. Because <laughs> <right? laughs> when he said it, when he said it was a, a manager, I was like, "No wait, does he mean like a manager of the company?" Or just some dude that runs a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't know, but it was mm -hmm. it was terrifying me. Oh. As professionals are traveling on the road, any tips for what does that say? Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have a couple of great questions Twitch. in the in the chat. So uh, this this band is professionals of traveling on the road. That is true. Mm -hmm. So um, our friend here, uh, hey Tommy P. Um, is uh, looking for tips for someone who has to drive 2,000 miles to move for work. I mean, I think tip number one is don't do it all at once. You know, 2,000 miles is a lot to drive without any breaks. You're going to want to have a bathroom break. You're going to you know, probably get a hotel for one of those nights. You know. Um, but seriously, um, what, what tips snacks, would, what would you recommend, Olio? Uh, water or <laughs> beverage. Snacks, probably coffee mm -hmm. <laughs> would be the beverage of choice. But if coffee is your beverage of choice, there will be a lot of bathroom breaks. <laughs> That's a mm -hmm. good point. Definitely. Diuretic. Um, salty snacks will help you retain that water. Mm. I have a recommendation for for and Tommy music. P. Uh, yeah, if you got if you got the ability to stream, Gangsta Grass has six albums plus uh, on Spotify and any streaming site, whatever you're streaming with. Um, you could be listening to Gangsta Grass albums for for pretty much that drive but yeah. also if you're on if you've got spotify to listen to on the drive uh i would recommend a playlist called greasy spoon music for soulful weirdos yeah i think at this point it's about 15 hours of music so uh that would that would get you taken care of for keeping the tunes going uh hey tommy p has already got a gangster grass playlist mm -hmm. all set up gotta love that yeah, yeah. yeah for some reason banjos are really good driving music It'll make you speed though. Be careful. And the right the right banjo roll will have you going, you yes, know, ninety will. miles an hour. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a I have a question for you. Don't want to drive Tommy. so fast you need a narrator. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Aeon Mixed in the Twitch stream is asking about where to pick up some eight fifty merch. Um that would be at Pensacola.com or dsloop.com. Pimpsacola.com. That's P I M P S A C O L A. Hola. Oh, no. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
Um, so I, one other thing that actually that matters a lot on these long drives is, uh, is are you driving your own car or are you going to be like renting a, a vehicle of some sort? If the latter, then some additional considerations come into come into a, a play. So, OK, so um, is it is that that's pimpsicola.com? Is that right, Dolio? Yes. Excellent. Um, or D sleuth. And that's just the letter D and then the word sleuth, right? D sleuth. Yeah, or Dolio Dolio the sleuth .com. We 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 have a lot of domains between us. Mad domains. <laughs> We got domains. We got domains like like sleeves has phones. <laughs> that's true. It's true. Oh, with two dogs. Oh, that's a whole. Oh, and a and a brother. Oh my goodness. Okay, so two people and two dogs in what sounds like is actually a car, not not a large uh -huh. vehicle. I, I, yeah, I just checked Pepsico.com. I think. Um, the product is down because we may have run out of those shirts, but I'll have it back up. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I love the 850 shirts. Those are nice classic. Um, mm -hmm. And you can also get you get wrench merch at wrenchaudio.com, where you can also get a bunch of Gangsta Grass stuff, which is also at gangstagrass.com. You can get. Um, uh, our son's uh, merch. At, wait, wait, Dolio, you set this one up for him, right? What's what's that website? Um, Boombaptherapy.com. Boombaptherapy.com. And that's uh, that, that dope R logo, yeah. Why don't you show off this uh, hoodie that you got there? Well. My cup is full of invisible Check stuff. this out. Anybody looking for a sweet <laughs> hoodie? We got No Time for Enemies hoodies that you can buy. Yes. Um, you, you cut those sleeves <laughs> right. off. Right? If you if you want to cut the sleeves off, you can totally do that and they they can hang. There's no there's no there's no fraying. It's very comfortable. I recommend getting two hoodies so that you can cut the sleeves off of one but leave the sleeves on the other. Um you might even want to get the one with the sleeves in a size bigger so you can wear the sleeved one over the unsleeved one cuz you know you got if you're trying to keep warm, you want to keep that torso warm. But a lot of times you actually want to leave the, the underarms, you know, open so that you have a nice balance of, uh, of heat exchange in the body. And uh, so, yeah, no time for enemies hoodies. And oh, wait, uh, let's see. Let's see if I like you can to see the back. Cut, I like to just cut the underarms out. <laughs> yeah. So anybody looking for Gangsta Grass merchandise, you can also just go to GangstaGrass.com and click on store and you'll see all the cool stuff. That's right. Oh yeah. Oh, the microphone one. Those are so nice. Mm -hmm. Those are so nice. I'm, you know, I personally am a big fan of the Gangsta Grass America logo. Like what I like about this hoodie is that it has two of my favorite Gangsta Grass things, right? It's got the no time for enemies, mm -hmm. which is just, you know, what we need to be kind of living in this, in this time of um, mm -hmm. sensationalization and polarization. And, and then on the back, it's got the Gangsta Grass America logo, which, you know, which is just that one that one gets me right here you can get t-shirts with either one uh or you get the hoodie which is both mm -hmm. or you get both um which is great both uh let's both another song that occurred for the first time right here on this live stream oh mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and we've got blair uh in the in the um in the facebook chat reminding us of the hats of brand new gangsta grass hats the brand new gangsta grass hats mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, mine is um, around yeah. here somewhere. Ra mm -hmm. Randy, you're—it's a rare. Is does that does that hat just not have any kind of logo on it at all? I'm very surprised by that. This is the one. This is a. Uh, this is the one from the boy Andy of Wisconsin. It's the Get Busy Living John. Mm -hmm. It's real tiny and gray on here. So it's hard to see. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that was a, that was a gift from him. Shout out to Andy. Um, <laughs> I used to have a gangster grass hat. You did, but you sold it. Dude, you they sold they it. bought it right off of Dolio's head. But it's okay. We're gonna because we're gonna bring more hats to Merlefest, and uh, that's coming up the weekend of the seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth. There are two Gangsta Grass shows: one the night of the eighteenth, and one the afternoon of the nineteenth. So if you're going to Merlefest, or if you're in the neighborhood and think you might want to check it out. Um, it is a uh, vaccination or negative COVID test required event. 
Um, and you know, that's, that's great. Trying to keep everybody safe. We love that. And, uh, and you know, outdoors for the most part, although there's indoor stuff too. What's up, Rand? If I may. Please. <laughs> Shout out to Joe Biden. Yo, your man was like, all right, look here. This is what we're going to do. You got a hundred people in there. Everybody can back. You got a big old place. Everybody can back to it. Everybody can back to it. All right. What I say? What I say? Everybody. I really want him to have sounded exactly like that. I would. I would have made it better. I would have made it a lot better. Like if people were asking questions, like, hey, what I say? <laughs> what I say? Everybody. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's gonna be dying. So my daughter, she, uh, my daughter's got a job. God bless her. She's working next to this lady, and they, they, you know, they got a hundred, two hundred people working in the building. So they told them about the mask, the, the vaccine mandate, and all. And the lady went crazy, and we was talking about, yo, she said the lady went nuts. I was like, Amy, and she was talking about how, you know, it's, you know, whatever, and, and then the gays, and then the, oh, I was like, Amy, this is what you do. On Monday, I want you to go in and tell everybody about the new girl that you just met when you were getting vaccinated on your way to, like, just just go full, just everything, just all of it, like all of the things that mess with the lady, and watch her melt. <laughs> That's the only, that's the only, have some fun with it, I say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but your man Joe was he, he was wild, and so I, you know, I, I'm glad that uh, you know, shout out to to Merle Fest for being like, all right, look, I know y'all want to come through and and rock out and all, but this is what you got to do: bring your John and make sure you're you know have a mask stapled to your face and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Stable what? to your face. That's how we do it now. Yeah, I mean, well, the thing is, also we've they've, we've seen evidence that. Uh, um, then use in events that require safety precautions actually have better ticket sales. Mm -hmm. Which is really encouraging. I mean, I don't know if that's if that's just me, but I find that really, really, really Make encouraging. Makes me very happy. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? The I, people who are, who are willing to take precautions to make sure they can still have a good time and not bring home the vid. Exactly. <laughs> One of the things that I saw that was really dope, too, was that... uh. Um, Lollapalooza with all them people there, like hundreds of thousands of people there. I think they only had 235 reported cases. I mean, you and you want to be like, well, that's great. And at the same time, you want to be like, but actually, you know, each one of those people then goes home and, you know, their kids go to school. And so, you know, what we're really going for here is zero. Um, that, that, it, it, it blew my mind up. It was like, all right, 100,000 and 235. Uh, okay. All right. That's not terrible. That is not terrible. Yeah. It's not the, it's not the, uh, it's, it's not, not the best. The, it's not the boom that you might have been expecting. Yeah. Given the, the size of the, all the people that were. Because if you, like, if you saw, like, some of them shot, but just folks, yeah. I was like, oh, it's a wrap. Yeah. Hey. Y'all just y'all just made up with like three new variants just right there. Yeah, <laughs> got a couple uh, questions in the in the Twitch. Uh, to ask about uh, Aeon Mix wants to know about uh, the lineup when we tour, which is uh, is the five person crew that you have been seeing lately. We got uh, me, Wrench. We got our son and Dolio on the microphone. We got uh, Danjo on the banjo, and we got Brian Farrow on the fiddle on that stage um that's generally what you're what you're going to see when you go see gang scratch show um come on, come on, variable, mainly the variable is going to be like you know if, if on some nights there might be an additional person or a special guest or something yes uh, yeah, you get the, the blammy blammy yeah, yeah those, those new york shows mm -hmm. highly highly likely to see special guests um, although Betty Lynn notes they're great in all the states. And um, uh, we also had a, a question in the YouTube about um, getting us to Minnesota. And I, I went and I checked um, to see uh, if we can talk about that. And I am not sure what the answer to that question is just yet. But suffice it to say, we will see you in Minnesota. 
Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it will be announced at some point. Yes. <laughs> yes. We, we do enjoy being in Minnesota when we go to Minnesota. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Wait, wait. It says, and I don't know, I hope this is true, but it says it's announced. It says it's announced and that these tickets have been on sale since like May, I assume, because this was a reschedule. So, okay. Yep. So, uh, Red Wing in Minnesota, the Sheldon Theater, March 5th. You can... Red Wing, Minnesota? Red Wing, Minnesota, which Red Wing was my dad's name when he was doing um, uh, Southwestern Native American art. So. You said Red Wing or Red Red Wing? That's right. Okay, cool. Just like just right, like cool. the uh, speaking of classic uh, bluegrass tunes, um, yeah. So uh, March fifth. Like, like, now to, to here's, our, how to here's how different. Here's how different all of our lives are. When you say classic uh, bluegrass tune, yeah. Dolio says like the boot. My <laughs> first thought is yep. the Falcon from Captain America. He had a pet Falcon whose name was Red Wing. Yeah, that's true. We we all over the place here. <laughs> I'm surprised nobody suggested the hockey team. Yeah. <laughs> and the, man, Oops. listen. We are everywhere and nowhere at once up in here. <laughs> if Red Bull gives you wings, then are oh, they ready? Oh, my God. Uh, all over the place. Lord Jesus. Yeah, then we better we better move on before we start to get to some of the uh, not safe for work possibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, yeah, they're yeah. starting to come up in the Twitch chat now. So. <laughs> oh, no! Yep. Uh, yep. I'm, yep. I'm <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh. <laughs> yep. yep, we're not going to. Nope, we're not going to. Nope. Um, it's really <laughs> thank you everyone somebody oh my gosh uh dolio janet in the facebook is with you on the boots by the way um but that is that is the answer it is the boots yes it's the boots they make some pretty good boots um so I kept my toes from getting smashed when i was working at the factory oh so you've actually so you've actually worn the red wing boots this is not just a not just a seen them in a store kind of thing no. Nah. Yeah, right. when, you, when, when you're working in industrial settings, you tend to have to have some nice steel toe boots. Okay, all right. Well, now I have to ask, what is everybody's boot of choice? Come on now. Mm-hmm. You know me. Go on. Um, <laughs> Tim Bow hoofs with the prints on the ground. Tim Bow's on the toes. I like the way it's going down. <laughs> all day. Yeah, I've, had some, I've had some good Tims. I got. I like the Ariats mm -hmm. and uh, some Durangos. Actually, the one thing that I really like about the fall is being able to wear my Tims again. Yeah, I got my first pair of Tims. Uh, well, the first pair I've had since college, like like last winter. Yeah. I was like, okay. We got Doc Martens, uh, Aon Mix in the, in the chat coming in with the Doc Martens. I was thinking about that. Are those, are those your boots of choice, Ren? Uh, I couldn't. Well, uh, they were very cool. Like when I was in, in, when I was a teenager, you know, like the alternative kids would have like Doc Martens boots, but they were kind of expensive. So I, you know, I had Converse All Stars, but I, I got, uh, I got one kid who had Doc Martens to let me cut the tags off the back and I <gasps> sewed, them on, sewed them on my Converse All-Stars. So I had Converse with a Doc Martin tag. On the back. <laughs> Everybody was like, yo, where you get them from? Yeah, right? Like, yo, you man got hey, Doc hey, Martin hey, Chucks. That is, uh, that is the wrenchiest thing I have ever heard. <laughs> man got steel toe Chucks, bro. What? <laughs> when I went to the first Lollapalooza, that been Lollapalooza number one in 92, I think. Yeah. Uh, we played Count the Docks. That was a fun game. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Could you even keep track of a number that high? No, we definitely found that amusing for about two minutes, <laughs> and then gave up. Count the Docks. That's amazing. I like that game. Yeah, I would pick up that. They didn't pick up too heavy where I was from. Not a lot of folks mm -hmm. rocking the boots too heavy in Florida. 
I'm definitely down to play that when we go to the UK. Play Count the Docks. Count the Docks? Mm-hmm. Were they really wearing them like that? I don't remember them wearing them like Docks. Like I mean, that's where they're from. I would imagine. Yeah. At Lollapalooza in 92, they were. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Wow. Oh, man, listen. In 92. Whoa. 92, girl. So, um, we do have a suggestion that there are, could be gangster grass boots. And mm-hmm. uh, that, I feel like, is going to be all about what company wants to partner with us on those. <laughs> Um, yeah, listen, I'm I'm all about that. Somebody wants to partner with us, I would do just about anything. We mm-hmm. we know Dan's favorite favorite boots are those like moon boots, half cowboy boots, half tennis shoes. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm still mad that they found those. Right. <laughs> I really am like who <laughs> whose job was that? Yeah. I gotta say though, the the those Adidas ones that we found were were even better, but those were the like six hundred dollar Adidas with cowboy boots on them. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's yeah. yeah, for sure. Do these count as boots? No. <laughs> Come on. Those are just really chunky chucks. Mm-hmm. Although, if you put the the steel toe in those, you'd be official. Oh no, they have a steel toe. They do. No. <laughs> what? No. Wait, what? How the hell did you? I wore these down so significantly that that I had to like have a new sole put on them. Like it was that giant. It was flapping. Thing. Yeah. You know what you do? They were flapping. You take a cobbler, have them put a lug sole on you. <laughs> <laughs> I yo, I will say this: lugs. No, I mean lug sole. That's the type of sole you see on the bottom of like a, 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 t- a on the back of like a timbo. Oh, okay. I, I thought you meant like the actual brand. Because nah. them lug joints, them things, they they lasted. They lasted a minute. I had a bowl. Yeah, because they were like the size of a car. It's like walking around <laughs> with two Miatas on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> them joints was thick, dude. Like, Yo, dog, you got on a Geo Metro. What's going on? <laughs> I used to drive a Geo Metro. I will tell you, if you have two Geo Metros on your feet, you can walk with no problem. They are light as a feather. <laughs> I used to, I, I would get out of my car and my roommate would be holding the back of my car aloft. <laughs> that's that you know, is how light those when cars were, are. When I was in high school, we used to do this thing where we would take, like, there was a few Geo Metros in the parking lot. But what we would do is we would get a few of us around the car, pick it up, and move it to a new parking space. <laughs> <laughs> and we just do that with all the like the little metros and Miatas. And <laughs> Please tell me you were singing the Mentos commercial song. Or- <laughs> I think this might have been before that even was out. When, when did that come out? <laughs> and those ones were like mid nineties. Uh, well, they, I think they first came out five hundred years ago, and they've just been running. No, I mean like commercial. <laughs> like I didn't even really hear about Mentos till I came to college. Like they were okay, like, but, but that Mentos theme song started at the dawn of time. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, just kept going. I, I, I saw a bunch of guys do that with a Fiero once. Like there was a, a Fiero parked in a handicap spot. Yeah, that was and like my and like. Part. These dudes came. I remember these dudes came out and Jonah were like, "Are you serious?" And they were like, "Yo, all right, we're gonna get." It. And they they picked up this dude's car and just moved. I was like, "This is happening right now." And, and it was one of those things where I wish I had had a cell phone then because that would have been the greatest video ever. Like, yo, your man's yeah, car is. Yeah. My first car was a Fiero. Those things were the smallest car ever. Yo, I tried I, to fit I, one like, of those. I put. I was changing the tire. Like when I first bought it, it was like, you know, you know how I like to do. I like to buy a shell and then just construct it from scratch. So it was pretty much that. It was like burnt out and everything. So I, when I was putting like, tie, I was putting wheels on it, so that it could actually have, you know, something other than metal touching the ground. <laughs> yeah. I uh, you jacked up one side, put the wheel up, and baby, you got you got two wheels in the air. <laughs> yeah. you, gotta use the jack. 
Your jack stands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I think it's gonna flip over. Yeah, it's all fiberglass. The headers on the um, motor is um, aluminum. Yeah, you can just throw the things around if you want to. Yeah. What? It's a fun little car to drive around in the city. You put it on the highway. It's some scary stuff. Yeah, my man had a Miata. It's far away from the ground when you're sitting down in it. <laughs> my man's Miata was like that. His Miata, he had a 92 John. It was it was brand new at the time. So he was, yo, know, he was like, yo, son, you gotta come around with me in the whip. We driving around State College with the top down in my man's Miata. Dog, I was packed into this thing. Like, I mean, it was, this is two seater, just the two of us in there. He was like, yo, we go. He was like, yo, we go try and go. I'm gonna go try and talk to these girls. I was like, where are you gonna put them, dog? There's right. nowhere to put them. Just give them your number and keep it moving. They can call you later because they are not coming home with you. Mm-hmm. That's not gonna happen, bro. Yeah, that was the, that was the other thing. I basically drove it. I, I, I finished finished putting it together my senior year of high school. I drove it around up until like the end of the summer, and I gave it away. Wow. Okay. Giving away cars. Okay. I mean, I put it together out of parts from the Johnny U. I mean, it was pretty nice after I finished, but you know, it was time to build another one. Shanti had a tiny little chunk space. Mm-hmm. Uh, I honestly, I, I, I hate to admit this, I don't know what a Fiero looks like. When you first said that, I thought maybe I like, I've heard of someone called Guy Fieri, and I thought <laughs> like maybe that's <laughs> a Guy Fieri car. Right, Sounds like a Mini Cooper, right? <laughs> uh, hold Smaller than that. Uh, it was, <laughs> they were really low. Like, yeah, yeah, they were, they were, they were tiny. They were extraordinarily small cars. And it was one of those things where I was like, "Who are you making this for? Who are these people?" Here it is. That's the one. Wait, what? I just put it in the chat. Oh, okay. So now I get to know what this. It was that oh, color. That is it like that the color classic too. '80s. Like I like I think like my uncle might have driven one of those. That is like the classic. Oh wow! With the, even with the little lights that go up, like yeah. Ah, it's fun to drive, but as you know, I am not a short guy. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, just my god. A bad oh my idea. god. Dan Toma also just sent me a, a photo of of this almost almost exactly this. I think maybe a slightly different year, maybe, but same color. Were they all red? Yeah, I only ever saw red ones. I don't know if I've <laughs> well, ever seen. We any had them other... in all colors back that where we had, but in the in in the south, you know, we put candy and all kinds of stuff on them. Yeah. 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 I but I, I think they were only really made in they red. Red. They came in. Uh, they came in red and black mostly. Yeah, I, I remember seeing color. a couple of black ones. Okay. Every other color was like a custom job. Interesting. Well, so Blair is asking about everybody's first car. So so Dolio's was a Fiero. Um, Wrench. What was your first car? First car that I was driving, or first car that was mine? Let's go. Uh, let's go. I mean, yeah. Let's go. First car that was yours. Okay. And it, it's well, okay lived... if you didn't actually buy it for yourself completely. No, well, the first one that, that was mine, because I bought it, okay. was uh, was was uh, pretty far along because I've been in New York and you don't necessarily need a car. So actually, it wasn't until I spent some time in Milwaukee, I had to pick one up. So I got a Nissan Sentra. It was black. It was named Johnny Cash. Nice. His name Johnny Cash. Nothing special. Um, what about what about you, Rands? Uh, I learned. All right, so I learned to drive on a '95 Chrysler Imperial. Whoa. It was like it was like gold. It used to belong to my uncle, and he gave it to my dad. He sold it to my dad, and it do, we used to do this thing where it would just cut off. Like you'd be driving, and it would just be like, "No, nope, I'm not on anymore." So you had to put it in neutral, start it back up. So I learned how to drive on this car. So I've been doing like, you know, handling on a whip since I was 
15 years old like oh this is a, this is a new thing that nobody has to really learn how to do but right. so then uh we got rid of that and then i had a 76 maverick Ooh, it was a up oh, dude it was a it was it was trash and i wish to god i knew anything about cars to well, really fix it up. yeah exactly yeah, those, those mavericks was pretty it was pretty dope they were it yeah you know, that thing was, it was like was, the original compact full bucket seats you know what i mean and i used to take seven people to school uh <laughs> to and from school every day in that joint in a map yes man it was me <laughs> me driving my man dave in the front tiffany was in the middle and then brian gerald and seth were in the back and every now and again we would take our uh abiel and abiel would like sit on brian's lap Dog, it was the it was the realest shit in the world, man. It was so out. Yo, we went everywhere this map. So I got pulled over one time a block from my house. Me and me and the fellas was taking my man Dave home. And the cops were like, Yeah, you guys fit the description, blah, blah, blah. I was like, this was nine, 1990. I was like, okay, wait. who in the it's fuck like- is robbing a bank in a 76 <laughs> Maverick? Like, you must be crazy. <laughs> You out your damn mind, dog. It was it was the wildest thing. Ever. Literally a block. No, they like a bunch of people. They, we heard that some people went and ran away from the circus. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what. Because you know Dave was about my size, so you know, and Darren was about my size at the time too. So we was all relatively big in this car, man. But I used to, man, I used to whip that thing everywhere, bro. Everywhere, I, I it died the first time I took it to state college, uh, to go visit my brother, and I drove up there, and that was as far as it, it made it up there, and then it was just like, nah, I'm good. Wow. I, I'm good. Yeah, that shit was hot. Though. I miss I miss that Maverick. That thing was dope. It was really dope. I miss my my Christine the uh that that that. 67 dart that i used to oh. roll yeah man i uh brought that when you remember the, the white one that i brought to that you that i was driving when, when you met me in state college yeah man oh that thing was sexy bro yo that I, 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 I once fit i once fits 10 people in that car <laughs> 10. it was a sexy ride dude 10. 10 that people. was a sexy <laughs> ride yeah it was crazy I, um, so my first, my, my first car was not actually the, the Geo Metro, but that was the first car that was like, you know, that it was a hand-me-down from my grandmother because it had this weird feature where in order to get the key out of the ignition, this is true, you had to push the, the shift, the shifter, it was an automatic because it was driven by my grandmother, um, you had to push the shifter forward in order to get the key out of the ignition. But think about how awkward that is, right? Because the shifter and the key and the ignition are both on the right side. So Mm -hmm. like somehow, you know, so I was okay with just pushing the shifter with my left hand and pulling the key out with my right. (laughs) But my grandmother was never able to master it such that like every time she needed to turn off her car, she would call my dad and have him come over and turn (laughs) off her car. So so I got, I, got the the car. Car, I got the car pretty quickly because they realized that, uh, you know, somebody needed to be able to turn it off. Um, and I drove it, I drove it for some portion of college, but I too, like you guys stuffed way too many people in that car. And um, at one point I was going to uh, do all you can eat crabs, one of my favorite things to do out on the Eastern shore of Maryland. And um, we had driven whatever friend I was with at the time, who I'm sure remembers this very, very well, uh, we had um, we'd gone to Ocean City and we were coming back. And on our way back, there was some like very loud noise and then a lot of like scraping. And so I pulled over and what had happened was the exhaust pipe, which, you know, runs under the car from the front all the way to the to the muffler and the tailpipe um, had rusted in half and was was dragging on the ground and um but i was going to get crabs and i was not going to be derailed from this uh endeavor so i said whatever whatever it's fine um there is a food lion near the uh near the the spot we're just gonna we're gonna stop at the food lion we're gonna get some duct tape we're gonna take care of this and we're gonna go get crabs so that is what we did so sparking the whole way to the food lion (laughs) we went and we got some duct tape 
and I taped it. I got into the car and I taped it up so that it was not. Now, there was still a big hole in the middle, which meant that for the rest of the time I was driving that car, basically exhaust was just coming into the car. Ooh, nice. Well, you get to drive and get high at the same time. (laughs) But I got my crabs and I ate all you can crabs for like six hours. Yeah. Yep. Now, yep. And then the way ice. the car died was in the you guys know the the Fort McHenry Tunnel in Baltimore, right? That goes under the yeah. harbor. Yeah. Um. So I was I was driving four people. So there were five of us driving to a debate tournament, and uh, we were in the because you know it was the I I don't know I guess we had easy pass then I assume so there was some reason that I was in the total left lane so I'm like in the very middle of this whole big thing of tunnels. And halfway, two thirds of the way through the tunnel, big, another big sort of explosion. But this time, instead of scraping, there's just black smoke everywhere. Oh, and it fills oh, the tunnel. No. Uh, and um, and the car just starts going slower and slower and slower and slower. So my, my passengers all get out and start pushing the car. But remember, we're in the left lane of four in the tunnel, but then when you get out of the tunnel, you're now in the left lane of like 16, because there's toll Yeah, lanes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So my people uh, pushed pushed the car all the way into the toll. I had to pay the toll, by the way, yeah. um, well, even, even though I was not propelled by a motor. Uh, yeah, and that was, that was the last time that the car ever drove. I have a question. Yes. <laughs> Before that happened, how long had it gone before they had an oil change? I'm sure it was a very long time. Basically, my first three cars all died the same way because I didn't understand the value of an oil change. Yeah, I, I was. I was <laughs> the first. The first uh, symptom. Well, the first clue was the black. Come, come, come on, y'all. Hey. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Pretty cool the black smoke, which, which sounds like you pretty much, and the fact that it just gradually got slower and slower. Yep. Uh, that. Mm-hmm. I see your duct tape and raise you <laughs> when my exhaust pipe broke on the Maverick. My shit was scraping. We pulled over. <laughs> These two little girls are, are oh, pulled over on this block. These two girls are, are jumping rope. We bought their jump rope off for five dollars, tied that shit around the car. My man drove home holding it up, like pulled it up so it wasn't scraping. To get it till we got home. Buddy, that's how you do it. This was, was, was so ninety one. I don't know what to do, bro. It was the most ninety one thing ever. Oh boy! All right, well, this is what we do. Thankfully, I didn't have to go through that. I mean, fortunately, my pops taught me about cars like mad early. So, like, basically, I know where every nut and bolt and things was going on. So, like, those are the first few things that get replaced whenever I got, like, well, like, I would always drive beater. So, the first thing I would do is redo the exhaust. Uh, I mean, I hit something on the, I hit something, and my jaw was like, bang, bang, bang. And then it was just like, hey. I'm like, all right, y'all, we got to figure this out. Pulled it over. I, you know, I, I rolled with smart cats. It was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> hey, young John, young John, come in. I'll give you $5 for that jump rope. What? I, I got to fix my. Mm-hmm. All right. Do the John yeah, under there. My man climbed down. The hill. <laughs> you know, they went like right down to the corner of the block where jump ropes were like five for a dollar. Yeah, right. 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 It was like we got five of these now. <laughs> Jump rope for everybody. They did. They did a was it quadruple Dutch? <laughs> I mean quintuple Dutch. Yeah, man. We, oh, yeah. but you know that's, uh, that was how we did it. It was, it was ridiculous, man. It was Jason absolutely Hansen ridiculous. In the uh, in the YouTube, Jason Hansen had a seventy-eight Thunderbird. Seventy-eight Thunderbird. Ooh. Yeah, I saw the message from high school. Yep. I thought Thomas was asking how did I fit in there. It was an interesting. Oh, uh, it took some easing into, but I have to remind folks that when I had it, um, that was my senior year of high school, and I was actually two inches shorter. Huh. I grew, I grew okay. two inches in college. Okay, well, is that is that two inches enough to make the difference of fitting into the Fiero or not? Perhaps. <laughs> I mean, it was still kind of snug. 
<laughs> was everybody just packing in like a whole bunch of people when they were like their first cars? Oh yeah, man. Because not everybody had one, but exactly. everybody wanted to roll with you. Right, right, right. You know, exactly. yeah. and I was driving one for one passenger. So yeah, I was driving my dad's Toyota pickup in high school, so we could just stack as many people in the back as we could fit in there. Was that legal? No, laws are different in every place. I know. I, so like I some places no that's idea. totally fine. I, I have no idea. Like, <laughs> you know, you pack as many kids as you can that want to hang out in the car and then fill up somebody's bedroom. If anybody's family had a hot tub, I'll go there and put 18 people in one hot tub and, uh, there's no water, no water in. No water. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, there's there's like one cup of water. <laughs> listen, listen. My freshman year, my freshman year at Penn State, uh, my homies came to pick me up, and my man drove a El Camino, right? So my man Greg and my, my man Eddie, they came to pick me up. And me and Darren and my girlfriend Stacy went home late like he had a cab over it we drove home like laying down in the back of the el camino from state college bro i'm like i'm sitting there thinking about that like yo i drove like three hours leg tucked into the back of an el camino no what no the- I'll, I'll see you one more my homie he was dj at a party oh <laughs> <laughs> at a school down the road a piece from, you know, from where we went to school in Cambridge. It was like Western Massachusetts somewhere. Of course, all the homies wanted to come, but not everybody wanted to drive. Of course not. So, since he was DJing, he was also bringing his own sound equipment. So he would rent, he rented a U-Haul joint. Oh no. All the homies in the back of the U home <laughs> <laughs> having ciphers and all kinds of stuff, <laughs> kicking back beers and the whole night for like a good two and a half hours. You're talking like 15, 16 dudes in the back of U haul with some, yo, these cats didn't know what the hell was happening. As soon as the do- the truck the opened up, all these dudes hop out, thought somebody was kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like Exhibit C. <laughs> wow. All up in the back of a U-Haul, pop out like, what's up? <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. Yeah, man, if you had a whip, everybody was like, yo, dog, I'm trying to ride with you. All right, well, how many of us we got? 36? Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> All day, man. All day. I love that, though. And I was, like, when I was in high school, I, I was the only one... I was the only one that really drove. My man Mike, rest in peace. He had a he had a little we, he had a little whip. Um, I don't even remember what that thing was. It was a tiny little gold joint. It was a stick. So he was the only one that could drive it. Yeah, that's why I drive uh, stick shift because nobody wants to borrow my car. Uh, and so he used to every now and again he would drive when we go hit the mall or something. I drive stick shift because Lewis Logic used to drink a lot. <laughs> And he was like, all right, look, I got a new car, and it's a stick, so I'm going to teach you how to drive it so you can drive me home. And that's what, yo, and because my whole team was a bunch of drunks, I was driving everybody home in Lewis's car or Shanti's car all the time. Yep. The other great thing about stick shift, of course, is that you can control your acceleration, which I find is like, you know, if you're trying to make a merge, and I would think this would be especially important in a place like New York where a lot of those merges are like non-existent. You know, you need to be able to to accelerate when you want to, not when your automatic transmission finally says, oh, yeah, sure. OK, fine. Why not? Uh, so, yeah, the stick shift is vitally important for for I think for like safety of merging. But, you know, with the rise of the oh of the hybrid cars, it's not it's not even really a so much a thing that you can even find anymore. It's really if somebody knows where I can get my stick shift PT cruiser, you let me know. Did they do the, the PTs in a stick? Yeah, that was what my my P, the PT oh, yeah, cruiser I drove for all those years. Yeah, 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 of course, of course, because yeah. they they were a little sluggish without the stick shift, but with the stick shift, yeah. perfection. Yeah, my homie had one of those. 
Yeah, I, was, I, I was caught one of those things when they first came around, but then I finally had to force them in the engine back Well, that, yeah, and that's, that's why you need the stick shift. And also when they first came out, there were definitely some, some issues. <laughs> also, yeah. if anybody knows how to fix a phantom electrical issue in the PT Cruiser I bought after that other PT Cruiser, that would be great. I'm looking for somebody to fix phantom electrical issues. Um, so we've been talking a lot about uh, sort of the history of our cars and driving and fun stuff. So um, do you guys wish to speak of the other historical issue that is uh, this weekend? There is a there is a, a oh, historical. That's, that's, that's called a segue right there. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yes. there is a big yes. event. So, yes. so Ra um, yeah, Randy, tell us about what September 11th means to you. Tomorrow is my dad's birthday. Mm -hmm. um, he was born in 1945. Um, he told me once that uh, the reason the Japanese surrendered was not because of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but that they heard he was born and didn't want to have to deal with him. And I said, I don't know if that's true, but... You hold on to that. You can definitely use that. Um, it's also Baratunde Thurston's birthday. Is it? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Share the birthday. Um, yeah, so uh, 2001, you know, we were, we were sitting there watching TV and everything. And I was like, happy birthday? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. To, sorry, yeah, I don't know what. Eh, yeah. gonna um, but I gotta, yeah, tomorrow I gotta. When I get off work, I'm gonna go bring him a cup of coffee and a, and a lemon pie and a card. And we're gonna celebrate his birthday because that's what'll always be first to me. It'll always be that first. Yes. Like Make sure to look at what card you're getting. Uh, as you know, sometimes I just grab a card and, and you're giving somebody a <laughs> card because I right. put my wife on her <laughs> car or something. And... Yo, when we were in Cali, we, we had a... Uh, America's Got Talent behind the scenes for a few one minutes. Of our, one, of our, one of our production assistants, her name was Lauren, and she was the best. Lauren was the absolute best. She drove us she all, drove all us the way out the to desert the desert and back. And didn't even leave us there. No, nope. yeah. <laughs> uh, Lauren was awesome, and Rich was like, "We're gonna get her a car," and I'm like, "Oh Lord, here go Rich with these cars." <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker <laughs> got her a car that was like, "Happy birthday to the man I love." Some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there looking. I was, I, I, I was like, All right, "Here we go," and I opened it up. I'm reading it, and it rhymed, and I was like, "This motherfucker right here." Okay, cool. And I, I could not wait for her to read that. As she opened it up and just closed it, I was like, All right, well done. Well yeah. done. Yeah, she was she was completely unmoved. It was very it was very amusing. I think she was like, Okay, don't move, don't make any sudden moves. <laughs> Put it down slowly and just drive them back. Oh man. You know, I, I actually still have a, a stack of greeting cards I bought in Thomas, West Virginia from that that card maker. Oh dude, oh, yeah. those are the best. I can't, the thing is, is that they're awesome cards, but I can't stand to give them away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like, was like one day, my phone was like, um, it's like the first page is like, I always drew, dreamed I would meet someone like you. And you open up and defeat them. I remember that one. Then it was almost like uh, on, the, on the front, it just says, never give up <laughs> on the inside. On your stupid fucking dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, is great. Those were the best. Uh, I was like, oh yeah, but yeah. The guy that did those, he was he was a local guy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a local uh, Thomas West Virginian. Mm -hmm. Well, and there was also all that great stuff from from Seth, uh, the artist out there. Um, like I, I got a bunch of pins that I, I gave, I think I gave each one of you one, but like the one about the cicadas was my absolute favorite and I didn't get a second one. So Dolio, you were the only person who has the pin that talks about, what is it? The sound, uh, uh, 
the silence was like a thousand cicadas or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Ah, <laughs> uh, Thomas, West Virginia. We'll see you again soon, Thomas, West Virginia. We will. Yeah, we miss Thomas, West Virginia. We will. Um, so yeah, everybody is yeah. Uh, is marking this uh, 20th anniversary tomorrow, mm-hmm. and uh, right. it's been a it's been a crazy 20 years, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It was. It's been 20 years. Mm-hmm. I remember. Yeah, where were you, Dolio? What was what's your what's your memory of that time? I, funny enough, had not long, not long returned from DJing a party near like Chinatown, and I had just gotten back from driving all the way back to Cambridge, Massachusetts, from New York. So I, I was naturally tired as hell, so I was mm-hmm. knocked out. And I woke up, and I was like, "What is what is this movie? I don't remember this. Wait a minute, this is happening! Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah, man. Yep. Yeah, I was like, "Oh snap!" I didn't have a TV, and I was uh, I was in my my spot in Brooklyn, and got woken up by some phone calls. And people are like, oh, somebody, somebody flew a plane in the World Trade Center. And I'm thinking like a little Cessna or something. I'm like, that's weird. Yeah. And then I walked outside and I started walking basically to to where I was doing some work at the Working Families Party, which was took me right through downtown Brooklyn, which is close to where uh, basically not, not far from where one of the bridges come up. And there was just like all these people walking into Brooklyn from Manhattan, there was like this throng of people, and I was like, "Wait a minute, something, something crazy is going on here." So then I started started finding out about it, and somebody had already like painted next to the bridge a message. They must have gotten like in the first couple hours, they got like a paint like a painting up in the bridge next next to them about about love and hate and something, and uh, it was like, yeah, it was like you kind of knew right away, like. Okay, there's gonna be a bunch of there's gonna be like a wave of hate and violence in reaction to this. Like, what are we gonna do? This is like living in New York. You know, you're surrounded by people, all different kinds of people. Uh, you know, some of whom are gonna be facing the brunt of that. So, you know, a lot of my a lot of my friends in the, the like days and nights right after that were like, what? You know, how what, how do you get out in front of that in terms of like we had teams um, taking posters saying like, you know, Islam is not the enemy and stuff like that. And it's like we pasting on the neighborhoods that seemed to be like the, the hotspots for for violence and stuff. But a lot of it was was about just like that, that day of destruction and just knowing the way some people are, how that's just gonna be, that's just gonna be the springboard for a bunch of other nasty stuff and and sadly like it was the way it like the way it set the course for a couple of decades now yeah. of you know not just wars but also you know fear and um you know people being less free and being worried about security and stuff and just a lot of ways that it just kind of like narrowed it narrowed life down a little bit Whereas I think before that there was there wasn't that so much sense of the way that the the like you know just the atmosphere of like oh you know danger and people at war with each other like narrows you down. Yeah, yeah. I was at the crib. I was chilling right here at the crib, and I woke up with my dad, and I was like. Yo, did you see this? And we're sitting there talking. And as we were talking, second one came through. We was like, what the? Uh, uh, um, like, I, and we just kind of stood there like, oh, uh. and, you know, I, my immediate reaction to any sort of tragedy and terror is how do I 
keep myself amused in this without falling apart. And that's when I was like, happy birthday? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Jesus Christ. And we just, we sat the whole day and just watched the news together. Me and my dad just watched the news together the whole rest of the day. Yeah. It was, it was, it was. Tell them like I was just, uh, it was always hard for me to figure out how to give somebody a birthday that you'll never forget. Oh. Yes, it, that, that's, that's how it felt. That wow. is exactly how it felt. Wow. Yeah, it was like, yeah. An extra crazy layer for for what was going on in New York was that it was primary day. Oh, so interesting. You had you had you know people going to who were you know going to poll sites, people who were poll workers out there, people that were canvassing, um, all kinds of you know the organizations that had people spread out around the city. But all of a sudden, you know, the phone the phone lines are stretched thin. Nobody knows. You know how to get in touch with all our people that are spread out around the city so that was that was pretty hectic and uh and so we were a lot of people scrambling at the time because yeah you, you couldn't make a call for a while there the, the like the whole the whole network was down mm-hmm. for a big chunk yeah, of the that day. was that was that that was after the blackout right yeah yeah I was like, wasn't since the blackout that we were in a situation where you couldn't get a hold of none of your New York peeps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do remember trying to get dipped with a bunch of different cats. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the the one of the things that has really, really tripped me out the most in the last twenty years is what the fuck happened to Giuliani? <laughs> it was always like that. Well, he was like, always a little weird, right? Yeah, but, but he was—he was still an asshole. He just—he had a good moment there. It, like, yeah, it felt that. like he, it, it felt like nobody knew what an asshole he was, and then he—he he handled as probably as best as you could have handled that situation, mm-hmm. and then I guess went back into like increased <laughs> asshole. Oh, so the rest of the world saw this guy and was like, "Holy shit, this dude's amazing." Yeah, I mean, it was just, just that they were just amazed at the fact that he did his job. Yeah. But that's not he was it, still that it, same it, asshole before. Yeah, but <laughs> like, when 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 doing your job is a a more than adequate response to two planes destroying two of the largest buildings on the planet, it's like. If, if 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 you're if that that's that's never in your job description. Yeah. It so is. to to, well, to have handled it as well as he did handle it, it made him look amazing. Right. It made him look to the rest of the world. The, but the city itself was prepared to handle a disaster because the World Trade Center had been bombed before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all he was doing was inheriting the preparation of a city that was already prepared. Yeah, so it made him look like less of an asshole when he was able to follow the script. Yeah, and he was able to he was able to just go down there and sort of like be there, be present, be right. talking to the news, so that he was sort of the guy that people saw as sort of like the you know the authority figure that was that was like in there and giving us information and and sort of walking us through things. So that's people like oh that's that's America's mayor. It's kind of. In some ways, the way that like Andrew Cuomo exactly. was like doing a decent job of like pandemic response compared to like a lot of places and nationally, and so people are like, "Oh, That's look great. at this great guy!" Right. It's amazing how like the shame. It's a shame, kind of like the just the simple act of doing your job the way it's supposed to be done turns mm-hmm. you into like some sort of superhero. Yeah. Now in New and York, example, in once the... he no longer had a script, he yeah. went right back to being the same old Rudy Giuliani. Right. And that was, you know, after I moved to New York in the, in the mid 90s and it was prime Giuliani time for for years before that of, um, you know, a lot of increased police brutality and presence and a lot of uh, restrictions on things, um, the way they, they cleaned up Times Square and um, just a, it was it was kind of a harsher time. And 
there was these yellow stickers and you would see them everywhere. I don't know who was making them. It was just a yellow sticker that said Giuliani is a jerk. And they were they were everywhere. Like you Probably can, his kids. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, sleeves. Uh, your day on 9-11, 20 years ago. Uh, yeah. I, I, um, I had just finished up an internship at USA Today, which at the time was in... Um, uh, what in Roslyn we call in 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 Arlington, Virginia, we called the Twin Towers, because um, there are these two identical buildings that were you know sort of taller than everything else around, um, and uh, and in the early in the early hours, um, uh, the the news reports were all over the place in in Washington. So, you know, if you're listening to um, like WTOP, the big news station. Uh, news radio station here, they were talking about how the, a plane had hit the USA Today towers. Um, so, you know, they, they, they pulled back that incorrect report fairly quickly, but, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of wrong information going around. So, um, uh, and I had, um, I had been working, I'd been working there all summer and had, had just stopped working there and gone to, um, back to my like regular, uh, sort of, you know, working my way through college job, um, at a local paper in Baltimore. And so that night, you know, having, having sat with my dad and watched, you know, watched everything happening on TV and, you know, talking with the folks, um, at USA Today about what was going on over there. Uh, I went to my, my little paper in Baltimore and did my job. And that night, um, at the time I was actually living in Williamsburg, Virginia, and I had to drive from Baltimore to Williamsburg, Virginia that night. Uh, and I drove past the burning Pentagon, like right, right past it. Um, there's a road called 110 that they actually moved not long after that because they were worried about having a road that was that close to the Pentagon. Um, but there's, you know, just tremendous black smoke and flames you know it was, it was burning for ages uh and um yeah that was that was very very surreal and then that weekend i had a debate tournament um, up at columbia university and they did not cancel it they went right ahead with it and they had wow. the um you know they had the big like light the towers of light that they were doing uh at yeah. the site of the world trade center but there was still at that time so much dust in the air that you know the it was it was really pronounced these like jets of light up into the up into the sky um and then in the in the weeks and months following there was a big there was a big um uh, highway construction project at the mixing bowl in dc anybody who's from around dc knows the mixing bowl and um they were they were trying to make it a little bit less of a mixing bowl so they were building these big overpasses with these like huge super tall pylons and they all ended up getting draped with these giant american flags so there was you know sort of that um through that time and then uh my neighborhood, I, I live in a place now where I can see the Pentagon from my back window. And um, right now they have a big tower of light. Um, my mom and I drove past it the other night and it's it's many, it's, you know, like when a place is having a sale or whatever and they'll do that spotlight into the sky thing. Imagine if there's yeah. like 20 or 30 of them. I'm not sure exactly how many there are. Maybe there's 20, um, maybe there's more, but they're they're all sort of crowded together in a circle shooting this this beam of light up into the air um a little ways away from the pentagon so that's happening now every building in my neighborhood has like a six story tall american flag hanging from it right now um so this is you know this is sort of the the epicenter in dc but yeah that's my memory driving past the the burning pentagon that night and just thinking you know everything has changed i hope we I hope we react well and not terribly to this. And it's 20 years later and I'm still not really sure what the answer to that was. Um, you know, I do know that if you can help the Afghans who have been evacuated, uh, please do that. Um, you know, that's a, 
a terrible situation. There are people who helped not just not just the military, but people who helped journalists, you know, people who who helped to get information out of Afghanistan are are still trapped there. Some them, yeah. of them were evacuated, but their families are still there and are in grave danger. So anything that you can do to to help is is worthwhile. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm. It's, yeah. it's my feeling that that we have not that that we have not found that that our our response was was good. And in, in my view, we uh, we we kind of played into into the hands of uh, you know people that wanted division and wanted hate, and uh, you know, and going in with military responses to. A couple of countries that neither of which was Al Qaeda. Yep. That's not a country. Correct. And you know, I was I was there. I was you know I was around for the anti-war protests. Uh, you know, following that because we could all kind of see that coming to be like, look, this is not this is not the the way that we're gonna that we're gonna way that we're gonna win from this. The, the the military intervention here is is probably gonna provoke as much terrorism as it's gonna prevent. And, you know, in 20 years down the line, unfortunately, you know, it would, I, I would be so happy if Afghanistan was transformed into a more democratic, more egalitarian place. And it's, it's heartbreaking that it's not. Um, and it just underscores for me how, and, you know, military intervention is not the, is not the technique for achieving that. And I think what we really lost was the chance to really go in to more dialogue and more more work on on building bridges and looking at things like funding secular education across a lot of places that don't have a lot of education um, don't have chances for women to be educated and build that up and and support you know the the uh, the organizations and the people within those communities that want education and the more you the more that you provide that education um you know for for opening it up for more kids to get the education and for girls to get education the more that's just going to undercut the religious fundamentalism that that has a grip on them and that's that i feel like that's the wedge that could really do that transformation in a way that a, a military intervention just couldn't so i was kind of a wasted opportunity in it I don't think I don't think that uh, you know that, that the war was like you know in the long term like you know the, in terms of religious fundamentalist countries and and terrorists and stuff I don't think that they've won but I think that that battle was a win for for the people trying to to divide us and that the you know the purpose of the purpose of terror and the terrorist attacks was to provoke response. And, you know, Al Qaeda had a, had a theory um, and they had a term that they called the gray area. And the gray area was something that they, that they talked about as being this situation in a lot of Europe and the United States where people were okay with each other. You know, where Muslims and Christians and Jews just kind of like coexisted in in like this thing that was not s separated into black and white against each other, and that was that was the enemy that Al Qaeda was fighting. They said we we need to cut down the gray area so that people feel like they are enemies and they need to take sides, and you know, and, and uh, the uh, the the 9/11 attacks certainly worked in their favor in that sense in, the, in terms of us sort of playing into that where you know as much as a lot of us try to keep those bridges open i think a lot of people a lot more people fell into the idea that muslims are the enemy or that we are we are in a in a big picture battle clash of civilizations which is really you know beneficial to the people that want that clash to happen yeah i mean that's the whole part i mean this 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 point of view might may, may, may not that uh, popular, but the, the whole purpose behind the military intervention and the war, quote unquote, 
um, was not to free the Afghan people or liberate any women or children. It was to sell bombs, missiles, bullets, tanks, jets. Mm -hmm. Most of None which of we it. left there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and also yeah, on some lunch, level... Right? Because if you leave... Because if you leave the stuff, you got to buy it again, right? Yeah, um, and I think also on some think, level, yeah. there was a purpose of providing some Americans with a sense of revenge. Right. Which is always By a waging to war on two countries that had nothing mm -hmm. to do with the attacks. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be two brown nations. Mm -hmm. um, every time we do military intervention into a, a foreign country, we're going to usually end up empowering another strong man who, or strongman type organization that ends up introducing totalitarianism. That's what happened in Iran. Iran was a democracy prior to our intervention because the people we wanted to be in power needed to be in power, we intervened. Hmm. Then we get a shot. Once you get rid of the people or, or get rid of who the people have chosen to be in power, you leave a power vacuum and the person that fills that power vacuum is someone who is power hungry. Word. Yeah. We have some we have some stuff happening in the chat. Oh yeah, people have some, something to say about all that. Well, um, yeah. So a couple a couple interesting points. One um, is uh, Kirby Red Girl notes that um, today is Suicide Awareness Day, which I I was not aware of. So thank you for bringing that to my awareness. Um, and uh, and Noli D Quiet Horse Eighty uh, has unsurprisingly strong feelings about this that it was not about freedom it was about taking natural resources and i don't i don't know so much i mean that we necessarily did take natural resources i don't know poppies maybe we could have done much we could have taken them but we didn't um you know and uh probably, finding someone else oil, to blame maybe. for the death and destruction we leave behind so like iraq arguably but afghanistan not not so much with the with those kinds of natural resources, but you know, it's a it's a sticky sticky thing. Mm -hmm. um, then the suicide awareness day point is actually is actually really important. I think you know we all know people that we have lost, uh, and um, you know if you know somebody who's in trouble, uh, there we are there are resources. Have, yeah, we as a band, as a band have lost you know quite a few. Of, of our close friends and um, suicide, you know, um, checking on your peeps. Um, when people are in pain, they're not always going to let you know about it, especially when they're in the darkest parts of it. That's right. Um, you know, um, especially in these times when a lot of people are disconnected from other folks. Um, there's not a lot of interaction. There's not, you know, people don't necessarily know who to turn to. Um, you can be, you know, that 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 shoulder to, to cry on, that, that that ear to listen. You know, you ain't even got to be trying to solve someone's problem, but just sometimes being the person to hear about it is enough. Um, yeah. yeah. Um uh yeah it is it is it is the case um that uh, uh we're seeing in the chat a lot of talk about the the opium question um uh kirby red says um agree with dolio and would like to point out that afghanistan produces almost 90 percent of the world's heroin production before we went there it was less than 40 percent um, there are many vets that have blogs about importing opium. I have not seen that. I mean, my understanding was that the U.S. was actually trying to cur curtail the opium production, but it was yeah, it actually it was did go through bigger. the roof after the after the invasion. Yeah. It, it um, right, it went did. up a thousand percent. It it, it um, did because the up. people we overthrew were the people who were keeping folks from going heroin. Yeah. 
right? Oh, and, okay. uh, and the black market is very, 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 very lucrative. And if you're trying to do things like fund terrorism, having a, you know, a narcotic that you can sell in the black market in great abundance is, you know, a pretty successful way to raise money. Um, but uh, as far as, I don't know, I'm, I, I feel like the the fact that suicide awareness day is the day before september 11th is you know Trippy. i mean it's it's a it's that's deep man there's a lot of people who committed suicide after september 11th as a result of losing loved ones um you know there's so a lot a lot of service members who go and fight in these wars come back and don't have the mental health resources that they that they need to deal with what you know, what they've had to do in the course of that, you know, that job. Um, and, you know, we lose a lot of people. We lose a lot of people this way. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, to take a minute also to talk about afterwards, September 12th and shortly afterwards, because it should also be recognized that people, people react to tragedy mostly in a lot of great ways we got we saw a lot of solidarity um and you know people wanting to go you know in, in in the immediate aftermath how much new york was basically like eight million people that wanted to go down there and start digging through the rubble and like save people but in in the longer term just like following that like in new york city like there was a vibe of just like we all we all just went through this and we could lose each other like people were people were so like in support of each other just on a on a deeper level <coughs> then. and i think like probably you know across the country also there was just like a, a period of people feeling like some connectedness and wanting to help out each other i think a lot of places um in the middle of the country like actually felt like new yorkers were americans more than they more than yeah. they usually yeah, 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 that. Yeah. Like, you know a lot of yeah. times the, the real american thing like doesn't it doesn't include the coastal cities but then like it did and it was nice that like we were all like oh yeah we're like yeah we we're 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 compatriots we're fellow country members you care about us we care about you and the united states for just for a little window there had the goodwill of the world like yeah. Everybody was like, "Oh shoot, United States, you okay? That was wrong, man. That was that was messed up." Like, and and you know, it, the United States doesn't always have such a good reputation out there in the world to to utilize. Um, and a lot of people, you know, don't don't think so highly of Americans. But we had we had that moment there where everybody was like, "For a oh, minute, man. yeah, oh yeah. damn, man, I remember that? We're, we're we feel for you, United States." And then, like you know, and then we went to war with two countries that didn't have anything to do with it, and just kind of like threw that opportunity away. I think that we had to like build so much with that goodwill that could have could have done a lot more productive stuff. Say word, yeah, I remember that. I, I remember that, and it was it was weird because you're like, oh wait, they they fucks with us like that now. Huh. Interesting. Cool. Uh, oh wait. Oh. Uh, oh damn. All right. Yeah, I didn't notice. That. I noticed that um. People in New York. All of a sudden became polite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like they would give you directions if you asked for them instead of telling you to f off. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was like, you know, just like waiting in line next to each other. I was like. Mm -hmm. What the hell happened here? Everything was super. <laughs> everything was like just super courteous and super mellow, and um, you know it would be nice if we all kind of kept that in mind a little more in general. Just you know that that sense of all being connected and all kind of being being in the same boat and being being here together and appreciating that when uh, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, there's a the whole world was like the door to Wawa. Like the door to wall. Yeah, the whole world was like the door to wall. <laughs> the truth, man. It's, it's the weirdest thing in the world. Like yeah, the Wawa entrance is usually the Wawa entrance is the friendliest place. Like, 
no matter what's going on, it's like, yeah, I swear to God, the next person I see, I'm going to fucking kill him. Oh, let me get that for you. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. It's the funniest yeah. thing in the world. I've never, never seen anything like that on earth. I saw it, two people getting ready to fight, like come to fisticuffs in front of a Wawa. And then somebody was coming through to get a coffee and it was like, oh, you have to hold them. Yeah, I uh, uh, totally the forgot door. what he was about to fight about. That's Aww. just beautiful, man. It is. We're just thinking around. I think if you had like a portable Wawa door. Right. I don't know. I think it, I think what's behind the door might might matter, right? Like you either are just about to get or have just gotten your delicious coffee. You are either just no. about to get or have just gotten the cigarettes that you've been wanting. You know, there's like. I mean, I will grant, though, this the same thing does not happen at a 7-Eleven door. There no, it does not. There is something else. <laughs> oh, no. It's very Wawa specific. <laughs> yeah. At a 7-Eleven, you got a whole different vibe having in front of that door. <laughs> yeah. Hey, today is Faye P.S. Smith's birthday, and uh, she's not so into the political talk. So let me just ask Faye, if you want to post in the Facebook chat uh, what you would like us to talk about for a few minutes. And also, happy birthday. Happy it's birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> Merry birthday. Yes. Merry birthday. There is definitely something to be said for having, um, you know, a common, something that's common for everyone to rally around or even to rally against. This is why I feel like we're not going to have world peace until the aliens invade. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you don't, you don't actually get people all getting together until there's an external threat. But I'm 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 disappointed, I will admit, because, you know, I felt that for a long time. And then we have this this pandemic virus, which arguably is exactly that kind of thing that we are all facing and we could all rally together against. And that is unfortunately not, you know, not what has happened so far. There's still hope, but not what has happened so far. You know who had that same thought about the. Uh... The common enemy? Huh. Ozymandias. Yeah, I was about to say, you want to invest in a giant squid to <laughs> kill a few million people and bring the rest of the world together? It's, no. Uh, no. Ozymandias in, in The Watchmen. Mm -hmm. Not trying. I thought Ozymandias was like, was I really thought that was a character from like Greek mythology. Am I wrong? It was no. It was, it was just the name that this guy chose. Yeah, he, it, you know, it's like a lot of superheroes. It's like you know, named after something or a reference to something. Yeah, they chose the name Ozymandias. He was the smartest man in the world. Right, and really, uh, uh, I was not Frank. Uh, Alan Alan Moore chose the name Ozymandias also as a subtext because of the poem about Ozymandias. That's look on my works, ye mighty in despair. But actually, it ends up all being like broken down and covered in sand over time. Yeah. Um, and uh, while we wait on um, birthday requests, we do have a really interesting um, note from Toma Technology in the chat. I remember when air travel resumed, I was working with an NFL team that came to New York to play the first game after 9 11. Before the game, they volunteered to help with cleanup efforts. Totally. I had forgotten. Yeah, right. Air travel was suspended for for a good long time there, too. A good few days, at least, as I recall. Um, yeah, everybody just kind of coming together and banding together. That is a beautiful thing. And speaking of New York, um, we have Gangsta Grass live in New York City coming up at the Gang Gramercy Theater March 19th. Mm. And those tickets are on sale. So you can get those tickets right now um, to catch New, uh, New York City Gangsta Grass, which is, as we have said, and as folks have mentioned in the chat already, a bit of a <laughs> different experience, a sort of enhanced Gangsta Grass plus Gangsta Grass supercharged in yeah, man. New York City. Everybody likes our accents. Uh, uh, so it looks like Faye is uh, is in the UK. Hey! And don't, uh, hey. don't have a particular request yeah. for birthday talk, so we can talk about whatever. Um, but she, it's cracking me up. Faye says she, she's not so into politics because she feels like the UK government fails at life. <laughs> <laughs> at life. Yeah, this oh, might yeah. be a symptom of governments. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what we will talk about 
uh, for Faye's birthday for a moment is that we are going to come back to the UK. That's right. In June. That's right. June 2022. There is a big UK tour. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, different parts of the UK. So wherever you are, if you're in London, we will be there. If you're in Bristol, we will be there. If you're up in Scotland, we will be there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know. I have I have in my head this this idea that we should just fly into Scotland and just like party the weekend before. <laughs> I'm down with no that. problem with that. I'll, 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 I'll call up my glass my Glasgow massive. They come yeah. out. Yep. So. Yo. Yep. Make sure Actually, that you are following you Gangsta my... Grass so that you will know when the spontaneous Scotland Gangsta Grass party happens. Yeah. Actually, um, if you remember my my homie in Manchester. Um, he is no longer in Manchester. That's right, the doctor. Yeah, he's in the States now. Yeah. But he's going to come back to Manchester for us <laughs> to make sure Manchester take care takes care of us again. That's fun. I noticed Emmanuel is watching on the Facebook as well. Oh, um, he is. Speaking of the Glasgow Mafia, the UK friends. I said the Glasgow Massive. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes, great folks. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people up there. My first time in Scotland, it was all like food poisoning and not me. I, I ate the halal food, so I was fine. But everybody else in the debate tournament got food poisoning. Um, nope. <laughs> yes. Anybody who was not eating the halal kosher food got the food poisoning. It was the, the entire debate tournament was basically canceled. It was terrible. And so that's you won, of, right? Um, <laughs> I actually... I'm the I, only one that can talk. I came, <laughs> in, I came in one place behind the the guy I ended up marrying, as it happened. Um, uh, yeah, I know. I was I was, I was very very persuaded. Um, and it was there was also a blizzard. There was like a blizzard in Scotland, and it turns out that they don't really know they don't like plow their streets or anything. So I had a I had a I I was not impressed with Glasgow the first time I went, and when I came back with Gangsta Grass, I saw that I was wrong, and Glasgow is awesome. Yes, Glasgow is one of the most awesome places on earth. <laughs> yep. Um, oh, I love. I I want you to know that I love that in the YouTube chat the um, the discussions of uh, cars are still going on. Yeah. Right. Yep. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We've got we've got like name. '90s Dodge Caravan uh, as a sort of you know audio transport and lights and sound and lights transportation vehicle, which which seems yeah, it was great. There was lots of cargo room in those things. Yep. Yep. I wish there were more, like reasonable vans you know like it's it's hard it is actually legitimately hard to find a good van a good sort of you know square rectangle kind of car i just yeah i mean the vans of old they start making them as in abundance because people are having smaller families you know that and all the cat daddies have moved to uh <laughs> moved to christ the 300s I'm sorry, yeah, did you my say uncle, cat, my cat daddies? daddies? All the cat daddies used to have them. You know, the old school uncles that, you know, wear the fuzzy Kango, the plaid shorts mm -hmm. and the gator shoes. They would all have a conversion van with the 8-track player that had the Marvin Gaye playing. Wow. Uh, I have never Very heard specific. the term cat daddies before. Randy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> he knows a few cat daddies. Mm -hmm. I, I've known a couple. Of my see, my uncle had my uh, uncle had a band. Percent of them was named Mr. Johnson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now my uncle had a van because he had four kids, um, and they was half Samoan, so they was big people anyway. Um, and like, so all of us would go places in in their van. Like, we would go to the we would go to the to the drive through. And like me and my brother and my cousins would sit on the roof of the van and watch the movies. Like that was the that was the greatest, dude. And you know, you had this big old van, and I know I mentioned it before, they were like driver's seat, passenger seat, two other seats with uh seat belts. And then the rest of us was just in there. Oh, man. Oh, man. Just chilling. Like there was a bench around the back that had storage underneath the seat. We were just sitting on the jaws, like, 
It was like the one we took. Was was sitting on the floor. Yeah, it was like that. But it it had less seats, so it was just people sitting on the floor chilling. It was it it was ridiculous. We did my favorite family road trip in a conversion in a conversion van that I think I think maybe my grandfather had converted. It was pretty cool, but like same deal. You know, only the front two seats had seatbelts. The rest of it was just whatever. Right. Uh, I miss that. I miss that. I think you guys know my my feeling is we should be touring around in an RV. Yep. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm fond of the uh, the RVs that we've had, like as far as the space and the accommodation. You know, it's kind of nice having the fridge in you. You're right. It is nice to have a fridge. It's true. Nice to have a fridge, because you know. Yeah, the fridge is on the road is, for a number of hours. That that mm-hmm. lukewarm beverage is not that refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> that is i like i like my red bull cold yeah. um i am the only red bull drinker in the crew uh thomas bringing up sprinter vans yeah yeah yeah, oh, yeah. big fans of the, of the sprinters the sprinters have been and the ford transit he mentioned the ford yeah, transit, transit well. a lot of the uh yeah a lot of the sprinters and the ford transit like they have like separate individualized seats one of the nice things about you know the older vans that just have like a flat row across is then you can lie down. Yeah. Yeah. To... Yes. The the bench the bench seat is a big, mm-hmm. big pull. But speaking of sprinters and the UK, um, I'm sure when June is coming around, we will have uh, we will have the uh, the MI6 agent that we right, yeah. uh, have drive us around in the UK. Do it. Yep. Yeah, yep. we love that guy. Yeah, he's fantastic. Remember, right, I'm still I'm a good 85% certain that dude is, was MI6. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Remember when he drove us through the tunnel? That was so yes. interesting. Yeah. So we were on, we the, we're on the train. The, took a little walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we and so so the way the train works is like you, you drive onto the train and then you sit there in your vehicle unless you, you know, go for a little walk, but it's not, it's not like there's shops or anything. It's not like taking the ferry. No. It's, it's, you know, you sit there in your vehicle, but it's weird sitting in your vehicle as the train is moving. Would you guys agree that it was like being in a washing machine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I see that. that a little bit. But, you know, having our little walk through the tunnel as it was moving. Was that was cool. cool. Yeah. We walked all the way to the back of the train, visited the little and- restrooms back there. Walked all the way Turn back. Turn back around. <laughs> yep. We got out. It was mm-hmm. by the time we got off. It was we got out. Of it, I think we were in Belgium. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then we stopped at a rest area and got Belgian food, which is very heavy. <laughs> very, yeah. Very, yeah. Very dense. <laughs> nice beers, though, mm. and some pretty good desserts, but they were also heavy. I just can't can't wait to go back. Um, we're looking at we're looking at a uh, European tours as well. So if you have any uh, requests or recommendations for the European tour, we are up for that as well. Yes, and, and food we'll take food recommendations as well. Always, yes. yeah, always food recs. You know, if we can get up, me all get back food. down to Oslo. Ooh, yeah, I want to get to Scandinavia. I'm, I'm, yeah, nice. bro, yeah, man. desperately. <laughs> So bad. Yeah, they got like this whole new, new Norse cuisine happening. New Norse like cuisine. This evolution of their <laughs> cuisine. I, I just really want to get into it. Most, I, 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 I'm sorry. I gotta confess. I only do music so we can tour, and I only do that, <laughs> and I only want to tour for the food. <laughs> I'm not even mad at that. <laughs> Not mad at right. none of the not mad at nary none of the right. things you just said, mm-hmm. which is why most of my landmarks are food places. Mm-hmm. So not mad at none of that. Stay tuned because these live streams, as we get back on the road more and more, will be less and less of people in boxes and more and more of people in food places yeah. and getting like, very excited about. Traveling like around. I know we got to go to that late night bagel spot in London. <gasps> yeah, the late night bagel spot. The uh, no, the the the, the, place. the the West African joint. That was pretty dope. I just want everybody to see uh, what's beef. <laughs> oh, 
Yes. I want to show off Woods Beef so bad. Frankfurt, Germany is Frankfurt, the best Germany burger in general. on earth. That place is so dope. The the the, the Nutella milkshake, like all of that. I, I want to. Mm-hmm. I would love to get sponsored by them. Be like, hey, how about you guys sponsor us and we'll just talk about your food all the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> All, all, right. all the time. You hear that out there? Food establishments? <laughs> Thanks, Come on, with beef. Well, thanks, Chris. What's your problem? Well, <laughs> give talk me all review. about your food if you just give us food. You might even food. get an art of freestyle about your food. Right? You, you, you <laughs> just send me food. And I'm all good. I remember the time people recognized you in the window of the chicken place in... Um, Oxford. Manchester. Oh, Oxford. Was it Oxford? I thought it was pretty Manchester. Sure, pretty sure that was... was Oxford. Manchester. No. Manchester was the night. Was the night of the like the Super Bowl or something? There was like a big football. Right, but game we hit the yeah. But, we up, but it was the chicken spot on the way the, back to the venue. I, the chicken the spot was in London. I feel. I feel very. That chicken confident spot was, was in, in London. Very confident they it was in Oxford because they were spinning hip hop in the chicken spot. Yes. No, yeah, that's what it was. That was in London. I was like, was dog, it? I will live in this. I will live right on this street, just for this chicken spot. I will move back to London just to eat here. <laughs> that was in London, bro. Mm-hmm. Man, listen. Mm-hmm. Incoming songs about some random bakery upstate New York. Incoming. Hey, listen. <laughs> yeah. Listen. I'm um, surprised that there's not a Gangsta Grass recipe book and or recipe review out. <laughs> well, ooh. recipe book coming. Yeah, I mean, that, that definitely could coming. happen. Could happen. It would have been the worst, yeah. actually. Yeah. And a, and a new Michelin star rating, which is uh, the, the Gangsta Grass stars assigned to restaurants across the country. Oh, I'm just discovering a new feature or a feature of Twitch I did not know about. Oh, Because I'm okay. getting friend requests, and I did not know that friending was a thing on here. Oh, yeah, it totally is. Oxford was the fight that almost broke out in the kebab place. Yeah. That yeah. Was, that was oh, God. Yeah, that's that was a very Everybody in that place almost got to fight. They was fighting behind the counter. They fighting in front of the counter. It, it was all oh. fighting. <laughs> I was like, I just, I want my shawarma right quick. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we will get out of here. Right like, we got to get out of here. Yeah, it's like grab your falafel and duck while the swing comes by and get out the door. Yeah, that place was wild. <laughs> they were wilding in there. Like the dude, the dude was in the back. He was like, you knew he had, he was he was tolerating. It. You don't know. I don't know how much of the dialogue was happening before we got there, but the dude, he had this look on his face where he was just like, he was like, you know what? I choose violence. <laughs> he like put he down really his, his he put down the tongs, took his apron off, started walking around the counter. We were like, okay, well, let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Mind you, the yeah. dude behind the counter was like seven feet tall. <laughs> that dude was enormous, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was like, somebody is about to catch the paw. Yeah, it's about to be ugly in here. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's about to wind up spinning on that meat thing. He's going to be scraping right. meat yeah. off of this ball. Right. He's been back there, he's like, slanging meat all day. And he's like, got super reach. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's about to make human shawarma out of somebody, and I don't know if I want to be here for that. So let me just get mine before. Right. It's like, we got to get to sleep so we can go to the next venue tomorrow. We don't have time to be making a statement. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, it is about time for us to get to sleep or go get our shawarma, as the case may be. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, yes, it's been tonight. lovely. Great questions in the chat. Awesome folks. As always, we appreciate the follows. If you are not already following gangstagrass.tv, um, gangstagrass crew on Twitch, uh, at gangstagrass on all of the other socials, mm-hmm. you are going to want to do that because we are we have a lot of stuff coming out, coming up soon. Lots of new music that's about to roll out. The mixtape is going to officially drop pretty soon. We have new yeah. singles that are coming. 
We are working on a whole new album. We have tours coming up. Don't forget, and this is super, super important, to go to gangstergrass.com slash events and you will find events if they are not already there that are happening near where you live, they will be coming. We are announcing more and more. So we're getting ready. We have a bunch of stuff this year and then a bunch more in 2022 when we're excited to really get out there and do it up after a, after a long time of not really being able to be inside with people. So this is gonna be yeah. great. And uh, and just to, to let Noli know, we're, we're uh, sorry to hear she's losing a lot of people uh, from COVID and we are trying to, to keep everything as safe as we can as we go out there. Yes. And uh, I really uh, watch out for, for anything we can do to make sure we're not causing any additional spread of anything for sure. Absolutely. Top, top priority. It's a tough position that artists are in right now. You know, if, if what you do involves being in front of a live crowd of people, um, it's a you know it's a really tricky thing and just just as wrench says behind the scenes we are doing everything we can to make sure that the venues where we're playing are being safe and you know we're playing a lot of outdoor shows and the indoor shows generally speaking have vaccination or negative covid test requirements and you know we want to keep seeing your beautiful faces behind masks is great mm -hmm. that's totally cool and mm -hmm. um we will see you on the road. Come see us at Merle Fest, the 18th and 19th yep. of September, Mammoth Lakes, California on the 24th yep. of September. Very excited about that one. And uh, then we're going to hit up North Carolina and South Carolina and Kentucky, and that's all coming in October. We've got um, Arkansas and uh, Memphis coming up in November and, uh, and a bunch more in February and March and April june of 2022 so we look forward to seeing you guys out there fall like angst grass get your shawarma good night everybody good night wooden floorboards <laughs> that'll be cool man Pretty sad.